If you were standing in a dark laboratory where the only real spotlight comes from a microscope, you'd see it a fossil fragment catching the light with a faint, stubborn sparkle. It feels like a crime scene from hundreds of millions of years ago. And that's the mood today. We're the forensic team of prehistory, picking apart the evidence left behind by a creature that vanished long ago. Our victim is the Heterostrican, an ancient jawless fish covered in external armor that makes it look like an underwater knight in full gear. But wait, this is not a story about dry bones and boring rocks. This is about how science brushed away deep time and revealed something unexpected, a spectacular spectrum of shimmering effects, the kind of glossy angle shifting shine that once flickered in the dim light of prehistoric seas. And yes, it's hard not to smile at nature's quiet sense of humor. Who would have guessed? These grandpa fish were stylish enough to hide from enemies and still talk in the darkness. Let's start with the first look at the fossil, the kind of find that makes researchers blink twice, just to be sure. Heterostrichans lived roughly 440 to 359 million years ago during the Paleozoic. They aren't the fish most of us picture. They were jawless, often flattened, and the head and front of the body were wrapped in armor, like metal plating built into the skin. Paleontologists have uncovered pieces of that armor from sedimentary rocks in North America, Europe, and Siberia regions that were once shallow seas, coastal lagoons, or ancient river mouths. The idea is simple. Bury something fast in fine sediment, and time sometimes forgets to erase the smaller details. And here, the details survived. The armor itself is a small engineering masterpiece. Many species had a large dorsal shield and a matching ventral shield assembled from countless small scale-like units. Each unit is like a tiny pearl tile buried for ages. The preservation can be astonishing. Under an electron microscope, scientists can still identify layers of dentine and aspidine mineralized tissues linked to these armored jawless fishes. That alone is impressive. Not just an outline, but microstructure still clear enough to measure. Then comes the sharp turn in the investigation. Using specialized imaging combined with optical measurements, researchers notice patterns that do not behave like dull rock. They find light patterns as if the structure is holding on to a memory of how it once handled light. The implication is bold. Heterostrichans may have had an iridescent surface shifting its appearance with a viewing angle like a car finish that seems to change color when you walk past it in sunlight. Now, step back and ask, what did its world actually look like? People hear deep sea and think eternal darkness, but the Paleozoic Ocean didn't come in one lighting setting. There were shallow waters, muddy waters, thick with suspended sediment and layers where sunlight filtered down weakly and then got scattered into a soft, broken haze. To put it plainly, this wasn't a crystal clear aquarium. It was a hazy underwater space where outlines blur, colors distort, and a single well-timed glint can decide who gets spotted and who slips away. Early Paleozoic seas weren't peaceful. Currents stirred fine silt, Storms could turn water into soup. Predators moved like shadows, and prey survived with whatever tools evolution handed them. Heterostrichans, with their flattened bodies and upward-facing eyes, look built for a practical routine. Stay low or in murky layers, scan above for danger, and keep the armored front facing outward like a shield. They weren't built for quick, agile escapes, and they didn't have jaws for heavy biting. So if they had any extra advantage, anything that made them harder to see or easier to recognize at close range, it could matter a lot. And that brings us to the big question that sounds almost impossible. How do we know the color of an animal that turned to stone so long ago? Pigments usually decay. Chemistry gets scrambled. Time is not gentle, but science has a clever workaround. Instead of searching for the missing paint, researchers look for the remaining color-making mechanism. They don't chase a lost dye. They chase the machine that created the appearance of color in the first place. They go beyond surface looks and use spectroscopy measuring how light reflects from the fossil to see how the material interacts with different wavelengths. 
Pair that with high-resolution microscopy, and you can connect reflection patterns to physical structures. And here's the part that surprises people. Color in nature is not always chemistry. Sometimes color is physics. That's where structural color comes in. Structural color isn't pigment like ink. It's microscopic geometry, ultra-thin layers, and repeating patterns at the micro and nano scale. When light hits those structures, it interferes with itself, boosting some wavelengths and canceling others. The result can be iridescence colors that shift as the viewing angle changes. You've seen it in Mother of Pearl. You've seen it on beetle wings. Tilt a seashell under a lamp and the color seems to slide across the surface even though there's no dye dripping anywhere. In modern fish, similar effects can come from reflective layers in skin or scales, sometimes linked to stacked structures and crystals that act like tiny mirrors. When researchers see hints of comparable microarchitecture in heterostrican armor, the old picture of ancient fish were surely dull. Gray starts to crack. Zoom back into the armor and the science behind that prehistoric shimmer. Microscopic analysis shows dentine organized with tiny tube-like features, forming a complex network almost like microchannels in our own teeth. Beneath that sits aspidine dense and tough, acting like a thick acellular base layer. When multiple layers with different optical properties stack together, light can reflect in selective ways producing stable reflection patterns that instruments can measure. Researchers measure reflected spectra and compare them with data from modern animals that have iridescent surfaces. It can sound like reading color with a machine, but it's really a way of turning an invisible interaction light-meeting structure into numbers you can test. Modern comparisons make this click. Think of herring, their bright silver-sided shimmer isn't just decoration, it's survival technology. When a school turns, reflections flare and vanish like a burst of lightning, creating visual noise that makes it hard for predators to lock onto a single target. Heterostrichans may not have formed massive schools like herring, but an angle-dependent reflective surface could still help in murky water. It could soften the body's outline, lower contrast, and make distance harder to judge. And the quietly funny twist is this, we tend to call these armored jawless fishes primitive like clunky prototypes. Yet the more we look, the more they seem to carry clever solutions. It's like discovering the old model wasn't just functional, it had features you didn't expect, and it used them with style. So why does prehistoric color or prehistoric shimmer matter so much? Because it changes how we read early ecosystems. If heterostrichans used reflection for camouflage, that tells us something about predator and prey, what could see what and how visibility shaped behavior. In low light or sediment heavy environments, reflective surfaces can act like moving mirrors. From below, an animal can blend into faint downwelling light. From above, it can lose contrast against muddy water. Picture a group of heterostrichans gliding past their armor, shifting from silvery to bluish tones depending on the angle, making them oddly hard to pin down. A predator hesitates for a heartbeat, and underwater a heartbeat can be the whole difference. Or maybe the shimmer also helped with communication. A slight turn at the right moment could create a subtle flash in the dark enough for another individual to recognize it without shouting across the ocean. With bodies that weren't built for quick dodges, heterostrichans may have relied on armor plus optical tricks to make up the difference. Either way, the discovery challenges the old assumption that early aquatic vertebrates were visually simple. Instead, it suggests the ocean became a battleground of light early on. Nature loves contrast. Something built like a tank might still sparkle like jewelry when it moves just right. To make this more than an abstract idea, scientists and digital artists can bring back heterostrichans through careful CGI, not as fantasy, but as a tool. They reconstruct the body from fossil data armor proportions, how plates connect, how surface textures repeat where the eyes sit, and how the animal likely held itself in the water. Then they apply reflection models based on measured optical behavior. The result isn't just a pretty fish. It's a visual hypothesis. 
Put it into a murky Paleozoic environment and ask practical questions. How would light slide across the armor? When would it fade? When would it flash? And how might that change the way predators and rivals saw it? And Heterostrakans were not alone. Paleozoic seas also included thalodonts with tiny scales and osteostracans with shield-like heads, along with many other strange neighbors, creating a stage where vision and survival tactics collided constantly. The best part is what happens next. Once you open the door to ancient optical effects, you start asking new questions about other fossil groups too. How many other animals used reflection? How many lost colors existed not as pigments but as physics waiting to be noticed again? In the end, the legacy of heterostracans is like opening a time capsule with a surprisingly modern message. These fossils don't just tell us what an animal looked like. They hint at how it might have appeared in motion in real water under real light, how it might have been seen. That pushes paleontology beyond anatomy and into experience. So what comes next? Better imaging, better models, and more exceptionally preserved fossils. Maybe we'll learn to read light signatures from other ancient armor and scales that we once assumed were silent. Either way, heterostracans leave us with a cheerful lesson. Never judge an ancient fish by the dust on it. Underneath, there may be a brilliant masterpiece waiting to be revealed. And the ocean keeps its secrets until the next fossil sparkles again.